Okay, so now that you guys understand how to propagate the material, what we wanna do here is explain what to do a couple years down the road with the root systems of each of these plants to set them up to have a good nabari or surface root structure. Now, depending on the propagation technique that you used, that will dictate the type of root system that you have on the plant one, two, or three years down the line. So what we wanna do here is show you some examples of some different species that were propagated in different ways so that you can really understand what's going on underneath the soil and then of course how to set up the nabari on each of these separate examples. So here we have some seedlings of pines. These are Japanese black pines that are one year old at this point. We also have a Japanese maple here that is a two year old seedling. We've got a hackberry back here that's also a two year old seedling. And then we have a whole bunch of cuttings of junipers that are one year in the process here. So I'm gonna pull each of these out of the pot here so that you can see the differences between cuttings versus seedlings. We're also gonna pull up an air layer here and show you what the radial spread on that looks like. So again, you know the nuanced differences between all of these and then how to set those up for a successful nabari going forward. So the reason that we wanna set up the nabari at this particular stage in the development of these trees is because our goal really is to create as wide of a flare at the base of the tree as we possibly can. This is going to help create thickening over time with the tree. And depending on the species that you're working with, it can also be aesthetically pleasing to have a very wide spreading and radial nabari. Now, of course, one of the best ways to create a radial nabari is going to be through the air layering process, which we already mentioned. But when you're dealing with seedlings and cuttings, you're gonna have a different type of root system underneath the soil, and you're gonna to have to contend with different aspects of root growth on each of these to set up a nabari. So setting up the nabari is very important this early on in the phase of developing a bonsai, because if you don't do it now, it's gonna become much more difficult, say five, 10, 15 years down the line, if not impossible, and you may have to start over again. So it's a very important step in the process. And again, I always start with the root system of the plant because you know, starting at the ground and kind of working your way up just makes sense when you're building the structure of a bonsai. As a matter of fact, you know, when I'm selecting material, like we've already mentioned, you know, you're going to want to look at the nabari first, you're going to want to look at the primary line second, and then the branches are third. So since we're setting these up from scratch here, basically, we want to start with the root system first, so we get that out of the way up front. All right, so of course, here we have our two seedlings. We're going to focus on the seedlings first. So we've got our hackberry on the left here and our Japanese maple on the right. Now these are two-year-old seedlings at this point, but you could work with trees that are one-year-old seedlings as long as there's enough girth to the trunk. It just depends on how much growth was put out in that first year. Usually I end up waiting to the second year and sometimes into the third year so that we have enough lignified tissue or woody tissue on the plant to merit working with them. If they're too small, sometimes you can damage the plants and they may not have enough roots to really work with. So usually two to three years into the process after the seeds have germinated is just about the right timing to start this kind of work. So what we're gonna do here is pop both of these out of the pot. Right, and I've actually planted these in different mediums here. So the Japanese maple is in Aoki blend. You really don't need to use that when you're dealing with seedlings. Something that's a little bit denser, like a, a potting mix, for example, is probably gonna be a, a better option. So I'll pull the hackberry out and show you here. This is actually in just standard potting mix. So the soil is obviously a, a lot darker here. It's very dense. This is just sort of pine bark fines and probably peat that's mixed in here as well but we're gonna work all of the soil out of here and show you what the root system looks like. So I recommend when you're working the roots out on a seedling like this that you do it with a chopstick rather than a root rake. Quite often you're not gonna have a ton of roots to work with to begin with and you don't wanna be tearing off fine roots with a root rake. So the chopstick can definitely help with this process here. So in looking at the root systems of both of these trees, this is about the amount that you wanna see when you start working with them. If there's much less than this, I might put it back in the pot and regrow it for one more season before I start working on the nabari. All right, so you wanna make sure to keep the root system of the plant very moist as you're working with it. So having a spray bottle on hand is an absolute necessity. So what we wanna do here is now assess the root system of the plant and cut certain things back. 
So when you're dealing with seedlings, you're always going to have a tap root. That's that long root that's running down through the base of the plant all the way out to the bottom of the pot, essentially. So in nature, the tap roots are designed to penetrate deep into the soil, go as far as they possibly can to establish a solid base for the plant. And then you'll get fine root branching off of that, searching for nutrients. But the tap root is the thing that's actually sort of locking the tree in place in nature. Now in bonsai, we don't want a tap root. We want a very shallow root system on the plant. So our goal here today is gonna to be to cut off this tap root, but we wanna cut it off at a location where we're still leaving enough fine fibrous roots on the plant to keep the plant alive. So for example, we wouldn't wanna cut all the way up to that last little root up here at the top because that's not enough to sustain the plant. That's going to kill the tree off. We've got a lot more fine roots down below here. So we're just gonna take off the sort of longest end of the tap root, pushing the root system back, I guess by about half or so making sure that we're leaving a decent amount of fine fibrous roots around the base here that potentially in the future we can work back to a much flatter root system. So this is basically done in stages over the course of a number of years. So what that looks like here to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the long extension on that tap root off, All right? And you can see that that shortens the root system up significantly. Now there is one other large root that's bifurcated to the back here. It's probably a little hard to see in the video, but there's another large root that's running towards the rear here. That's not the tap root, but it is an overly thick root. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. You want to make sure that whatever roots you're cutting off, if they're large roots, that they don't have a ton of fibrous roots out at the end. And you can see that's all that we're going to be losing by cutting this off. So that's completely fine. That's not going to harm the tree. Okay, so that gets us a much, much shallower root system. Now you can see, of course, that we have fine fibrous roots starting here, emerging from the trunk. And then as we work down into the root system even further, there are more and more fine fibrous roots uh, emerging on all sides down below. So we can actually take off some of the fine fibrous roots that are a little further up on the trunk if the trunk is actually a little bit thicker down below that. So in other words, we're trying to create taper at the base of the tree here, creating a widespreading nabari if possible. So if there's a fine fibrous root that's quite high up on the trunk and the trunk actually does continue to spread and flare below that root, we can go ahead and take that root off, which will allow us to create a shallower root system in the long run, still with a decent flare to it. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this little guy off right here. And you see that was a decent amount of roots, but we still have a ton of roots left down here at the bottom. And this is actually a pretty radial system of roots at this point, which is great. So at this stage, I don't want to do really any more root pruning. I think that this is going to be enough to sustain the plant. It also has reduced the depth of that root system significantly. And you can see if I put it on my hand here, it's a very flat almost radial pattern to the root system of the tree, which is exactly what we want when we're starting the setup for a Japanese maple or really any plant that was grown from a seed. All right, so next up, let's take a look at our hackberry here. You can see that the root system on this is significantly longer than the Japanese maple, but we have the same issue going on. We do have a tap root here. So usually the tap root is right smack dab in the center and kind of a continuation of the trunk. It's actually a little hard to tell here because everything's entangled in the center, but the tap root is this guy running right down through the middle here. And of course we have a very large thick root running off to the side. So my goal is to, of course, shorten the tap root. We're going to go ahead and cut that back. All right. So not much fine fibrous rooting attached to that, which is completely A-OK -okay to have cut that off. Now the thicker root that's running off to the left side here, let's see what's attached to that at the moment. All right, so that's pretty much everything down below that's hanging down here. So we can't cut this entire root off here because that's only going to leave us this and this on the side here. You can see that that's not enough roots to sustain a tree of this size. So what we're going to have to do is just start to weaken the thick root here by cutting off some of the overly elongated fine fibrous roots down below. That will slow the growth 
of that root down so it shouldn't thicken too much more over the course of this year and it pushes energy back up towards the upper portion here of the root system which will allow us to produce more fine roots up here and then maybe in one or two years we can cut off that thick root down below here and have a very very shallow root system on the plant. So sometimes it's necessary to take the cutting back of the tap root and the thick roots in stages or phases uh, to make sure that you know, obviously the tree is going to survive. That's our number one concern at this point. But we have reduced the depth of the root system by a significant amount here and we're getting a much flatter nabari at this point already. All right, now before we pot up the seedlings, I wanna talk about the various sizes and types of pots that are available and why I might use one versus another. So the most common thing that I will use here at the nursery is a net pot, which is something like this. You can purchase these online, on Amazon. There's all sorts of specialty companies as well that sell them. They come in various shapes and sizes. This is, I believe, a three inch, maybe three and a half inch round net pot. I also have a nine by nine uh, square basket here, which is also quite good. So the nice thing about these net pots is that they breathe very well. So they provide a lot of oxygen penetration to the root system, which in turn will provide a lot of root growth and a lot of subsequent top growth on the plant. So you can grow these trees out very quickly in these types of pots. The one issue with these though, is that they dry out very quickly. So if you aren't able to water your trees on a regular basis, meaning during the growing season, probably at least twice a day, these may not be the best pots for you. In those instances, you might want to use just a standard nursery container. So we've got several options here. We have the uh, pot that one of the trees was actually already in to start with here, which is just a very small, again, I think probably three and a half inch round pot, relatively shallow, which is uh, you know, something you want to find for the most part. We also have a much larger version here, which should be about an eight or nine inch uh, round version of the pot as well. And then I've got one here that's actually quite deep. This is probably a more common pot that you're gonna come across at nurseries. These are uh, really good for growing plants that are gonna go into the landscape because you're not really concerned about the depth of the root system of the plant, but because we're trying to create a very shallow root system and a flaring nabari, I would avoid using a pot like this when you're developing trees from you know, seedling, cutting, and air layer. It kind of defeats the purpose of making a shallow root system. So we're gonna set this guy aside. So if you want to go down the route of using just sort of standard nursery containers, make sure you're sourcing something that is relatively shallow. So much more shallow than it is wide. So something like this would be great. Something like this would be great as well. Now, in terms of the size of the pot, when we're talking about seedlings, you know, if you're trying to thicken the trunk, you might be thinking, well, I should put it in the biggest pot possible to have as much room for the roots to grow as possible. That way it'll thicken up very, very quickly. Well, the trouble is we're dealing with very small seedlings or very small cuttings here with hardly any roots on them. So if you were to take one of those seedlings that we just pulled out and looked at the roots on and put it in a huge pond basket like this or a big nursery container like this right from the get-go, there's not gonna be enough roots to absorb the moisture from the soil and you can cause root rot issues. So you're actually going to end up delaying the development of the plant and potentially killing the plant through causing root rot by putting it in a pot too big too quickly. So I'd recommend with your seedlings, dropping down to a pot about this size, maybe one size up from this, and then growing it in there for a number of months or maybe even a full year, and then potentially up potting it in a larger pot like this, or doing something like a pot in pot. So essentially growing it in one of the smaller pots, like a net pot like this to start with for half a season or maybe a full season. And then the next year, instead of taking it out of here and planting it directly in the larger pot, you can just sink the smaller pot in the larger pot with soil in there, which will allow the roots to grow out. You can take the tree out every once in a while, shear those roots back, which means you can keep a very compact root system on the plant while thickening the trunk a little bit. We're gonna talk more about this in detail in an upcoming phase here, but just wanted to give you an idea of why I might select one pot versus another. Now, for me personally, I like using the net pots, like I said, so we're gonna pop both of these seedlings up in the smaller net pot today. All right, so we're gonna be using our net pot here and we're gonna be planting our little seedlings in here. So I wanna talk a little bit about the soil that we're using here. Now you could use expensive bonsai soil like you know, algae blend, for example, or you know, mix your own components of Akadama pumice and lava rock. When the seedlings are this young though, that's really not necessary. So you can actually use just a standard potting mix. And what I have here is miracle Grow potting mix. 
So this already has uh, some fertilizer built into it. It's a very dense soil, but it's going to allow us to produce a lot of top growth in a very short amount of time, which is one of our goals with the trees at this stage of development. And again, in the next section here, the next phase, we're going to talk more about trunk thickening and all of those aspects of it. But one element of that is having a slightly denser soil. So we're going to use that in the net pot here. I'm going to pour some of this in here, and then we're going to put the seedling in and show you how to sort of flare out the roots a little bit. All right, so we're going to do the exact same thing here with the Japanese maple, filling up the net pot here with the soil. I usually want to pack this down in the bottom a little bit before I stick the tree on here. That way the soil's flat and then I can set the root system and sort of flare it out flat within the pot here. All right, and then we're going to backfill the rest of this in just like the other tree and take it out and water it. All right, so pretty straightforward. That's how we set up the root system on seedlings to develop a good nabari going forward. The key here is just to get rid of that tap root. Now in the next section here, we're gonna show you the difference between the root system on a seedling versus a cutting, because the way we approach those is completely different. So let's pull up some of our cuttings and take a look at those. All right, in this section, we're gonna take a look at some of our cuttings that we have here at the nursery. These are Itoegawa Shinpaku juniper cuttings that were taken just one year ago. Now, depending on your growing environment, it may take you two years to get to this point with this amount of growth. But here in Tennessee, we're very hot and humid in the summer. and We have an incredibly long growing season. Starts in March, ends in November. So we can get a tremendous amount of growth out of these guys in a single year. So what we're gonna do here is pop these out of this container and I'm gonna show you what the root systems look like because they are quite different from the seedlings that we just took a look at. All right, so you can see our seedlings here. I'm gonna go ahead and just take our spatula end of the root rake here and kind of cut this guy out. 